Green Stadium. We all know what lies ahead of us um, in this all-important, crucial encounter against Liberia. We played home and away. I have our head coach with us. I also have our forward, that is Lyle Foster, and our captain, Ronwin Williams. And so we will start with Coach Hugo Bros. There'll be one-on-ones as well afterwards, and you're allowed to uh, film training the first 15 minutes, and I'll start the <coughs> clock once we get down there. So without further ado, Coach Hugo. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. First of all, I'm about the team. So uh, as you know, we have to replace uh, Nanjabula Blom by uh, Michael Tin. Uh, for the moment, there are still three players who are not arrived because of uh, the game they played yesterday. So they travel today. They will be tomorrow with the group. I'm talking about uh, Mayambela, Longwane and Sitole. So tomorrow morning they arrive and they will join the group. I will also provide also special attention for uh, the Sundowns players. They came back yesterday uh, from the trip to Sudan and uh, I could welcome them two days before breakfast. I was very happy with that. That shows that uh, they like to come to the national team and it's a very professional attitude. I think in the past it was a little bit different, but um, I was very happy to see them and that they have a breakfast with the team together today. You know that we are, that two tough games are waiting for us. Um, the efforts that Liberia did the last months uh, shows that they have ambitious. Um, they prepared the stadium, conformed the FIFA rules. <clears throat> last year in June, they played their home game in Morocco. So now we have to go to Monrovia. Um, the foreign players want to play again for the national team. So that was not the case before. And the rumor I have, the bonus they get is enormous to be qualified. So that means that we will have a team in front of us who will be motivated. So it's up to us to not underestimating them, even when it's for some people maybe only Liberia. But I think it should be the biggest mistake we can make that we underestimated them. So the only thing I think we have to do is looking to ourselves. Um, we have more quality. This is not a guarantee that we're going to win, but it's an advantage you have. I think we are confident. We played four good games in September and November. <clears throat> there was one game less against Botswana, but that was my responsibility because I changed all the team to see the players I didn't see so much in the national team. And we have a close group. I feel that it's important because, you know, it will be also a mental struggle, those two games. And we have a, when you have a close group, it's always better than if you have a group where there are some players who don't like to be there or some players you, we don't like or players don't like. So we don't have that. It's a very close group. So it's very important to play those two games and to win it. Uh, if we want to be sure of qualifying, we have to win two times. I don't take, think that you can take the risk and say, OK, four on six is also good. Probably it will be enough, but you never know. Um, what I know now, and but it has to be uh, confirmed, that we play against Morocco in June and that uh, Liberia is playing in September against Morocco. So <laughs> you see the situation. So they will know our result already before they play the last game. And in Africa, everything can happen. So we have to play for six points and then we are sure and um, we can look at the game in, sept in uh, June against Morocco and we can also look with a happy face to the game against uh, Liberia, Morocco and Liberia. The program for the next days is tomorrow we have two times training. 
Wednesday and Thursday one time, Friday is the game, Saturday we are still here to have one training, on Sunday we leave for um, Liberia, so Monday one training and Tuesday the second game. Thank you. Thank you. Opening the floor to questions for Coach Hugo. Please do say your name and the media house that you represent. Sorry. Coach, um, when you announced the squad, you mentioned that you were angry with Ujabulo Blom's club. Has there been more clarity on that? Are you happier that he has actually <coughs> Look, the, the only thing is that we get a mental, uh, mental, that we get a medical report and uh, Nanjabulo is not able to play and to travel. So that's the reason why we have to replace him. Masati from Times Life Coach. Just on uh, the, op the opponent, um, Liberia, have you met uh, you know, videos to, to watch them? Do you know what you're up against? I think uh, we know them because um, <coughs> we, we saw two games, Egypt and Morocco. So nearly all the players were there. Also the, the players abroad. So we have a good view on them. Um, and we know again that it will not be easy. It's a team who is playing very compact, close to their goal, and try with the breakout being dangerous. So uh, again, we think we have to be patient, certainly. And not we willing, uh, absolutely, uh, making that goal and then giving space to the opponent where they he can use it very well. They have some quick players. So um, again, um, yes, it's a tricky game or two tricky games. Uh, also there we play on uh, a synthetic. So, uh, okay. But again, again, uh, um, I've co I'm confident. I, uh, I see this group. I see this group growing in the, the games we play September and uh, November. And I see them now also. So, uh, yes, I'm confident. Lorenz. Coach, uh, this is Mr. Stefan. Um, in June last year, in June last year, you started the qualification against Morocco, Fafana. Um, how much difference do you feel about the squad that started the campaign in June compared to now? I think um, <clears throat> when you um, see the, the team who was playing against Morocco, and now I think that this team make progress. Certainly, um, for the also the the fact that um, after the game against Morocco there were a lot of critics. You saw what Morocco did on the World Cup, so losing there was not uh, a humiliation or whatever. Though they have a very good team, uh, but okay, I see now and uh, the, the games again in September and November that there is progress in this group. And that's the most important thing. And that is what I was looking for nearly for two years. Um, it was very difficult. I have to make another team. Um, and the critics we got, it was not so easy to work in, in such an environment, in such an atmosphere. But it changed a little bit now. And, and, and again, uh, I'm very confident in what I saw in the past games. So, But we will have to do it on the field. Friday and next Tuesday, that's for sure. Yes, uh, <coughs> from CGTN, coach. Um, as former African champions, a lot of the, the rest of the continent look at you as a team that should be doing well at the AFCON. I know you've still got to qualify with two tricky games, but is it trickier and trickier with each campaign to get into AFCON and to do well uh, and, and try and challenge for top ones? Yeah, but <clears throat> it's always difficult. Eh? I mean, when you're playing for um, for Afghan, and certainly uh, a country like uh, like South Africa, everyone expects that you qualify, and 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 we feel that also. We know that we have to qualify, and I said it. I think two years ago. Eh? Don't blame me when we are not qualifying for World Cup, but you can blame me if you don't uh, qualify for Afghan. So I think uh, it has to be nor normal for a, a country like South Africa to qualify every time for Africa. So no, we are yeah, near the qualifier, but there are still two games. 
So um, we will try to do our best. We do our best. We will try to qualify. And it should be good for this group also. Because this group is, has not so much experience on the highest level, on international level, except that maybe the players of Sundance. But this group needs a big tournament. And I saw that with Cameroon, we went there and nobody believed in us. And when I compared the group before Afghan and after Afghan, uh, it was a big difference. You become better, you, you progress by playing those tournaments. And this is what we need. This is what South Africa needs on this moment. Those tournaments, there was not um, a stable line in, in qualifying. You qualified and then one or two times not, and then again qualifying. Yeah, that's not the way you can progress. So let's hope that we qualify now and that we go on qualifying and then automatically your, your level will, uh, will be higher and, and you will progress. Mazola. <laughs> is there is there a best way? It, you know, it's like that, and that's uh, the disadvantage uh, uh, for a country like South Africa that we are at the other side of the world and uh, players are, t are having to travel ten hours and more to arrive here. So you lose always one or maybe two days because those players who arrive tomorrow, you can't have a normal training with them. It's impossible. They were ten hours in the plane. So, yeah, it's a disadvantage, but uh, we have to take it like it is. And um, but this is not for me um, an excuse to say yes, but we couldn't have a good preparation. But it's a fact. It's a fact. So Thursday, tomorrow afternoon, we have to start to, to train tactically. Wednesday also, because Thursday is the, is the training before the match. So we don't have so much time. But... Um, you will not hear me saying that uh, if we shouldn't qualify, that that would be the reason. Uh, Coach, uh, Sitem is I think from, I don't know how things, uh, just talking about qualifying for AFCON on the, uh, the February, uh, there's a tournament we've been failing to qualify for, which is Chen. How important it is to qualify for that tournament just to uh, make sure that we give uh, the taste of international experience to those players who are not yet in Bafana to also have that taste of in international experience. Yeah, but <clears throat> therefore it's important too. So the minus 23 are playing also qualifiers now in Congo, against Congo. So uh, yeah, you, you need to have a, a following up. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, you can't every time um, starting again giving the chances to Bafana players to have an international experience. Also, the teams before need that. So when this team can qualify for AFCON minus 23, it will be good later for if they become Bafana Bafana players because they have already a, an AFCON. And you see that in many other African countries that also the younger teams are playing AFCON, are having or have international experience. So and this is something we have to build up because we don't have it here in South Africa, this following up. We have a youth team and then suddenly there are players going everywhere and you don't know where they are or you lose them. You lose them. So the, the team who was going to, to the Olympics, he was there. And then I have to think who was also there. In, uh, in So this is not normal. This is not normal, so we have to build up something, a structure, that also those teams are qualifying for Afghan, and then maybe, maybe, it will be a little bit easier for Bafana Bafana also to qualify for those tournaments, and not only for uh, Afghan, eh? okay, also for World Cup. Any other questions for the coach? Okay, if not, I'm going to move the mics over before we ask the captain. And I'll forward to have you right this morning with the rest of the Sundowns team and uh, back in camp. Um, what does that feel like? Oh, good day, everyone. Um, it's always, always an honor to be part of the national team. It's a massive privilege for me to be here. I'm excited. I know the challenges that's, that lies ahead. Um, 
but the boys are, are looking focused. Spirit in the team is good. Waiting for a few more players to join the, the camp so that we can, you know, start uh, focusing. So yeah, I'm just happy to be part of the team again and seeing so many familiar faces. And obviously there's a few new ones that have done extremely well. So we welcome them with open hands as well. The man has obviously dominated media in recent weeks. Uh, we've all been keeping a keen eye on Lyle Foster and his career. Back for the first time, I think, since signing for Burnley here in the national team. Lyle, your thoughts? Yeah, just to reiterate what Ronan said, obviously very grateful to be here again um, after missing the last two camps. Um, yeah, so thanks to the coach for the confidence to, to be with the group again. And yeah, just very excited to get kicking on and um, to work hard for the for the next two games coming and hopefully um, yeah we can get the results and like Ronan said the boys are focused there's a good spirit in the team and yeah it's always nice to see familiar faces again. Taking questions for Lyle and Ronman. Go back there. Uh, what's the um, importance of you know uh, you guys keeping a clean sheet? Uh, you've obviously been doing well. Uh, so what's the importance of you know, when we play here at home and when we play away, uh, would you guys continue keeping clean sheet? Definitely. I mean, once you keep a clean sheet, you know, half the job is done already. You know, and us as defenders, that's what we pride ourselves in, in keeping clean sheets. Because we know we've got the firepower up front. You know, we've got so many good attackers that are doing very well in their respective leagues now. So, you know, it's just for us to stay focused, stay solid at the back and, you know, not... Uh, give away silly goals, you know, we've learned our mistakes, especially in the November camp, mm -hmm. you know, where we had to analyze and obviously, you know, we don't want to repeat those mistakes. So uh, clean sheet is highly important and that's what we strive to, to get in these two games. Any more questions? So Dante, before I get to the TV, you're not shooting off this backdrop, are you? Do I need to move it, move it a little, a little bit, bit over? <coughs> Happy? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jonty. Um, Lyle, uh, just to ask you, obviously you got your first goal for Burnley and then you played Manchester City on the weekend. How was that experience, both perhaps the goal and the, and playing against a team like City, mm. um, who kind of are one of the best teams in Europe? Mm. And uh, do you think you can carry your form into Fofana and perhaps you know get on the score sheet in the next couple of games? Um, well, yeah, it was amazing scoring my first goal for Burnley and obviously grateful for the opportunity that I get to play there and um, yeah, the game against City was a tough game. I think everyone saw that. Um, I think the toughest place in the world to go to at the moment in world football and a valuable lesson learned and I think one that can help me and the team going forward. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking to to score some goals during this camp and to work hard. Um, yeah, I think it's important for us to win the games and yeah, we focus on the next two games coming in. Any more questions? Okay, see us and then Matlatsi, guys, I'm just going to have to ask you to project a little bit, Lyle, here as well, you're a little bit soft, mm. so go ahead with your question. Uh, Ronwin, um, in terms of Akon, you <coughs> obviously played in the tournament, how important is it as a as Bafana Bafana to do well? Because automatically there comes this expectation each time you guys don the jersey and, and take to the field representing South Africa. That's highly important, I mean, <coughs> we know what Bafana Bafana means to the country and we bring hope, you know, and I mean, we don't have to look uh, far back to see what the rugby team done at the World Cup and see the hope that it inspired into the rugby and into South Africa as a whole. So we want to play our part as well because we know um, how important we are to, to the society and to the people who are looking up to us. I mean, there's so many negatives going around in our country now. So, you know, the little that we can do you know, to, to, to help the country, you know, that, that that's going to be, you know, highly important. So, you know, when we put on the, you know, the Bafana jersey, you know, we, we have that expectations. And so the boys just need to know that, you know, that they, you know, they're not only doing it for themselves, not only doing it to qualify, but, you know, it's to, to uplift our country as well. Um, to you, Ronda, um, there's a possibility that, uh, you know, the bulk of the of the playing squad um, in the two matches may be from Sundowns. Um, how important uh, is going to be that Champions League experience 
uh, that you guys have been exposed to and to your life. Um, did you get any feedback from any of the members of the players or even the coach after the match? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From my coach and from my players, not from opposition coach and players. Obviously, it's it's nice having a lot of familiar faces, and but the main thing is, you know, all twenty three players that are here are here for a reason. You know, it shows that they they're doing well, extremely well for for the club. So we all have a job, and our job is to to represent South Africa and to do well. Um, whoever's on the field on the day, you know, they're here for a reason, and they're here to do a job, it, which is to qualify the national team. You know, for Afcon, so. Whoever's there need to do the job and get the business done. But surely, you know, the guys, you know, at Sundowns, you know, we'll help. We'll speak to the guys, you know, we'll obviously from our, you know, they've this, the experience this, that we've picked up, you know, the last few weeks, the last few months, the last few years, for some of them as well, you know, just to, you know, make things a bit more easier. I mean, we can only use it, you know, to our advantage. Guys, I'm also just looking at the time. It's about 10 minutes before the team leaves the hotel to come here. I know that I promised you one-on-ones. Uh, I've got a bit of a proposal. Would you guys like to say